Right, hi students, welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're going to do graphs and applications of logarithmic equations. Uh, the questions we'll be doing are from assignment 5.5. Um, you will appreciate a lot of these um, questions that we're going to do because it is really, really a real life applications of uh, what we are learning uh, in this chapter. All right, let's start off by uh, recapping how the graphs of the logarithmic functions looks like. If we look at A, Right, the base is two, which is uh more than more than one, right? So the graph will looks like this. Where the x intercepts is one, okay? Uh because when you substitute x to be one, uh y will give you log base a one that gives you zero. <clears throat> All right. So the x intercept is one comma zero and uh, be careful when you draw the curve, uh, this part <clears throat> this part of the curve does not touch the y-axis. All right, so for the uh, D, if you see that your base is actually uh, more than zero but less than one, so your graph of your local name functions will look like this. Again, this part of the curve does not touch the uh, y-axis. And but the x-intercept is still the x-intercept point is still one comma zero. You can just put one there. Okay, right. All right. Um. So for the following, the rest of the questions, uh, you will find that uh, it's very long, very lengthy. But actually, they're all very simple. Really, it's just basically substituting uh the relevant data into the formula given like in this case here you are given a formula to evaluate the ph value all right so the formula given to you is this formula here um so you just need to know what h plus represent h plus represent the hydrogen ion concentrations right in moles per liter <clears throat> all right so we have some plants uh, that produce flowers in different colors so depending on the ph level of the soil um, so we need to determine, okay, given two different, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it, two different ion H plus, given two different H plus, uh, we need to determine the color of these flowers. Okay, you must, I must apologize for my very husky voice because I'm running a very bad flu and, <clears throat> yeah, sore throat. All right. Okay, right. So for the first part, what we're going to do is, Right, yes, 5.6 times 10 to the power negative 7. It actually refers to the hydro, hydrogen ion concentration. So we will be substituting that value into your H+. plus. Okay, and you can just easily use a calculator to evaluate the answer. Now, log base 10, your calculator is already log base 10. So all you need to do is just to press log. On the calculator, just press LOG. Okay, and then followed by this value. Okay, on the calculator, just press negative log followed by 5.6 times 10 to the power negative 7. Right, and then you get 6.25. And 6.25 is between the range of 6.0 and 6.5. Hence, the color of this flower is pink. All right, so the second part, um, just substitute again, you know, the uh, value for the H plus. And this time, the uh, value 5.11 is between 5.0 to 5.5. And therefore, we are getting a blue flower. Okay. All right. So we have done with flowers. Now let's go on to dealing with fruit flies. <laughs> okay. So you can see how uh, how real life these logarithmic functions can be. Okay. So what we're going to do is that we're given a uh, <clears throat> formula. All right. To calculate the number of fruit flies after a certain days. Okay. And we hope that you get less and less. Uh, okay. If you get more and more, and that's it. All right. Also, so what happened is that uh, we're going to calculate what is the original original number of fruit flies <clears throat> at the beginning of the experiment. So at the beginning of the experiment means when t is zero. Okay, so it's basically you just substitute t to be zero and then 1.65 to the power of zero is one, one times 100 is 100. So at the beginning, you have 100 fruit flies. So let's see what happened four days later. All right, so when you substitute to t to be four, basically just use a calculator, press 100 times bracket. 1.65 close bracket to the power of 4. Whatever you see on the screen, you just follow exactly onto the calculator, you get the answer. And oh my god, the fruit price increases. 
it now has become 745, 741 fruit flies. I think because you never do anything to it, that's why it keeps producing. Okay, so if you see there's some fruit flies in your house, right, you have to do something to it. Lah. Cover a fruit, throw away fruits that are rotten or whatever, or eat the flies. I'm not too sure. Okay, how about the third part? My goodness. So if you don't do anything and just let the fruit flies continue to procreate, let's see what happens when it reaches 400. How long does it take to take 400? So 400 means you substitute N to be 400. Because N represents the number of fruit flies. So substitute N to be 400. Okay, so here um, we will have to do a little bit more. What is the mean of a little bit more? We will have to uh, divide both sides by 100. Okay, this is what I've done here. Divide both sides by 100. And 400 divided by 100 gives you 4. And you can bring LG to both sides. You can bring LN also because on the calculator, you have L LG, which is LOG base 10. Or you can use LN, which is log base E. But I think LG is more common. That's why it's called common log. Okay, and then here we apply the power law. I don't know whether I need to write it down. Oh, yes, I wrote it down. All right, apply the power law there, bring the T down, and then T will be log 4 divided by log 1.65. And you have to round up. Okay, you have to round up the number. You cannot round down because you want it to be like reaching 400. If you run down, you may not reach 400 yet. So it takes how long? Three days. Okay, if you don't do anything to it, it will take three days. To have 400 fruit flies in your house. Oh my god. Okay, so here I want to uh, caution you folks because that is a very, very common mistake a lot of students will make. And what is the common mistake? Yes. Instead of dividing it both sides by 100, right? Basically, you just very happily bring log to both sides. All right. And then you just very happily bring the power T down. Okay. So this is a common mistake that a lot of people do, a lot of people make. And I need to tell you that this is not the correct way. This is the wrong concept. Okay, because if you want to apply the power law, the T, okay, if you look, if you look carefully, the T is the power of 1.65. It's not the power of 100 times. Okay, let, let me show you the difference. This one versus this. Can you see the difference? Here, the T belongs to 100 times 1.65. The second one, the T only belongs to 1.65. So you cannot apply power law there. Okay? So you can't do what I've shown you on the right hand side. Alright? Basically, you just need to have a term here only. Just one term. Okay? Bracket something to the power T. And then you bring log to both sides. Alright, so let's take a break from fruit flies. Take a break from flowers. Let's do... Uh, some other questions part one solve the equation that is pretty easy okay not difficult at all you just apply the power law bring the two up to your x to become log base for x squared equals the one to convert to index form and you get x squared equals to four x can be two or x equals to negative two and y is x equals to negative two means rejected because for the log to be defined this value, this value that I circled for you must be more than zero. Okay, so part two, you should be able to sketch the graph. Sketch the graph. Okay, it's actually an increasing, increasing one because the base is four, which is more than one. Okay, and the x-intercept is one. So that is part two. All right, then part three. All right, so part three needs a little bit of explanation. So from part one, we know that uh, to soft lock x base 4 equals to half, x is equals to 2, right? This is where we get the answer. Right, so in other words, we know that uh, if I'm going to draw a line, y equals to half, okay, uh, I can replace this guy with y, right? So if I draw a line, y equals to half, right? <clears throat> then the intersection point, the x coordinate of the intersection point is x equals to 2. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, right, so there's an intersection point there and the x coordinate of the intersection point is x equals to 2, but we have found it early on from part 1. Okay, so you see the one that highlighted in yellow for you? Yep, that is the part of the curve that I'm interested. I want the part of the curve that is below or equal the line y equals to half. And that's the one that highlighted for you in yellow. <clears throat> 
So with that range that I'm interested in, what is the corresponding values of x? So the corresponding values of x is the one that highlighted in blue for you, and it's between 0 and 2, inclusive of 2. It cannot be inclusive of 0, okay? Because as what well, we keep mentioning, for the, log, for the log functions to be defined, x must be more than 0, okay? But it can be equals to 2 because we already found it up here that the x coordinate of the intersection point is 2, okay? All right, so now that come back to <laughs> another question on pH value. So this time is on what? Toothpaste, soft drink, sea water. Okay, right. So, but this kind of questions, although it's very lengthy, right? It's very easy to score points really, really. Okay, you just need to be very sure what H plus represent, what pH represent, and that's it. So from part I, you're given that the pH level of a toothpaste is 10. So that is quite alkaline, oh. So you just substitute pH equals to 10 into the formula, okay? And then uh, multiply both sides by negative 1 to get negative 10. And here we just convert to index form. So the base is 10. So H plus is 10 to the power negative 10. And uh, yeah, so the hydrogen ion concentration in the toothpaste will be 1 times 10 to the power negative 10 mole per liter. Right, so part 2, likewise also, you just substitute, okay? So part, part two is slightly different from part one. Part one, you substitute your pH. You're given the pH level, but part two, you're supposed to find the pH level. You're given the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so basically you just substitute the ion concentration, ion, hydrogen ion concentration into the formula. Use a calculator, you get 2.60. And since 2.60, it's more than seven, uh, less than seven, sorry. The soft drink is exceeded. So it is advisable not to drink too much soft drink because it may cause tooth decay. So maybe that's the reason uh, why you or your siblings are getting tooth decay. Huh? Okay, the cut down on the soft drinks. All right, so part three, now we go on to see water. Okay, so for part three, we need slightly more working because we need to calculate some percentage increase in the acidity of the seawater. Right, so there are two different pH levels. Okay, ocean surface is at 8.2. So you have to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration when pH is 8.2. Basically, it's just substitute into the formula, multiply both sides by negative, convert it into index notation, and you get your hydrogen ion concentration. And you do it the same when pH is equals to 8.1. All right, so the difference is Right, 10 to the power of negative 8.1 minus 10 to the power of negative 8.2. You take the higher one minus the lower one, divide by the base. The base is this guy, times 100%. And the percentage increase is 25.9%. Right, so what does it mean? Right, what does it mean? You do your own conclusion. Okay, so we have dealt with flowers, we have dealt with, uh, <clears throat> what is that? Uh, soft drink? Toothpaste? Uh, fruit fries? No, we are dealing with populations for monkeys. Okay, so this question 15 is slightly more challenging because you're supposed to come up with your own formula. But this is not difficult also because we've already learned <clears throat> the formula to calculate compound interest, right? So this one, um, it's actually followed uh the concepts of uh uh deducing the uh formula for compound interest okay so for part one what we need to do is we let a subscript zero be the initial number of long tail monkeys and a be the final number after the five percent decrease right so the formula would be, if you were to recall your compound interest formula, right? Total amount is equals to P1 plus rate. Remember this formula that we learned for compound interest? Right, so basically, we are just using this formula. So if it's a decrease, then this one will become minus. Okay? So this is, uh, and then the A. 
five percent yeah five over one hundred yes yeah so one minus five over one hundred if you use your calculator you get nineteen over twenty right and then for the other types of monkey <laughs> okay it's still using the same formula but because it's an increase right so the uh operation that we use that is a plus because it, the number of monkeys get more and more <laughs> the other one get less and less so it's a minus so this one is plus because it get more and more okay so these these are the two formulas that uh populations model that you can have for these two different types of monkey Okay, so let's consolidate what we have. Uh. So we have two different uh, populations model. One is this guy here. I think it's for the long tail monkeys. The other one is for the uh, banded leaf monkeys, I think. Okay, so what happened is that we are told that currently, okay, the uh, we have more of this long tail monkey. Okay, the long tail monkey is five times of this banded leaf monkey. Oh my goodness. So AO is equal to 5BO. So if you want to have equal populations, then we need to equate A equals to B, right? Okay, right. So I'm going to substitute your A to B. This, this one here, we have the, 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 the populations model. And then B with this one. And then you see that we have some unknowns, right? But we can get rid of it. How do we get rid of it? Yes, we can substitute one into two. And you see that I can just cancel the BO on both sides. Basically, I just divide by B on both sides and they're gone. Okay, so this part here is a bit tricky. It's really a bit tricky because I need to... Oh, I need to use this one. I need to use AB to the power N equals to A to the power N over B to the power N. Because I have, you know, I, I life is so difficult. I have... A value in terms of t here i have also another value in terms of t so basically i need to group them together okay so i need to use this rule so what i need to do is i'm going to divide both sides yes okay divide both sides by uh 19 over 20 to the power of t okay right and then this one here i apply this rule Okay, I better erase this one. Okay, let's continue. Right. And if you just use a calculator to evaluate this, you will get 22 over 19 to the power of t equals to 5. And that is the exponential equation. And we just bring log base 10 to both sides. Apply power law. <coughs> and take LG 5 divided by <coughs> LG 22 over 19. and yeah, you need to round it up and you need 11 years, okay, to have an equal number of long tail monkey equals to banded leaf monkey, okay. All right, so we have done with, oh my god, sea water, toothpaste, fruit flies, monkey. Now we are dealing with sound, okay. I know that the wording is a bit small, right, but it's actually quite easy lah. The first part is you need to understand what I represent. So I represent the intensity of the sound and it's measured in watts per square meter. And of course, there is an initial, the initial one. The initial one given is 10 to the power of negative 12 watt per meter squared. It's, approximate, it's the approximate intensity of the softer sound. Okay, the softer sound. Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear me? So that is 10 to the power of negative 12 watt per meter squared. All right, so part A, all right, we're supposed to, you have a lab, and then, you know, the noise level cannot exit 35 dB. So if the intensity of the noise is at 6 times 10 to the power of 28, we want to calculate if the noise level is acceptable or not. Right, so it's very easy. You just substitute all these required values into the formula to find the loudness. And just use your calculator and work it out and you get 40.8 dB. And since 40.8 dB is more than 35 dB, yes, the noise level is certainly not acceptable. Okay, part two. 
part two, what happened? It's yeah, this one you have to watch out. Okay, especially if you are one of those that who always like to listen very loud, mu loud music. Okay, so you really really have to watch out. Uh, what happened if your loudness is eighty five dB? Okay, what is the intensity? So you just substitute L equals eighty five into the formula, and then just convert LG to log base ten, change it to index notation. Okay, and then cross multiply to find your intensity. So which is one times ten to the power of seventy three watts per meter squared. Oh, is that considered very loud? Oh, should not exit 85 dB. Okay, right. All right, let's look at part three. So part three, we're going to compare two different kind of uh, object here, hair dryer and train. And we're going to compare, obviously, the train, the loudness of the train is much higher than the hair dryer, but we want to know how much how high it is, how many times it is, right? So let's calculate for hair dryer first. So you substitute L to be 75 dB. Okay, so from there you can calculate your intensity to be this one here. So this is a hair dryer. And then you do it for the train. Okay, and this level. So therefore the train is louder than the hair dryer by Oh my goodness, 10 to, power, 10 to the power of 12 times. So if if you want to buy a house, make sure you don't buy it near a train station. Okay, because you may suffer from deafness or whatever. All right. Right, and can you believe it? Finally, it is over.